choice, but you provided a, none of the above. Kind of leaves yeah. open. Did, can you ask them to put like other orange? No, on? not not in this version. Um, okay. Although that is a certainly a good tool is to provide the answers and then have a space for just you know explaining something else. Um, you know, I don't think the students really had enough time uh, on the pretest administration of this to 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 really give it a lot of thought. Uh, and, you know, I, I wasn't expecting them to write a paragraph of explanation. Whereas on the final, I, I was giving them the opportunity to write, to explain as best they could what would happen. Um, so I definitely feel like I got some information about what they were thinking out of this version, and maybe less out of the previous version, although, you know, the same kinds of things are coming up. Um, It'd just be interesting to see if they had the same misconceptions going pre and post, or if yeah. they gained a new misconception based on the teaching. Right. In the other category, there were people who were saying things that just didn't, I couldn't even interpret. So I, there was some other misconceptions in there, but I, I couldn't even categorize them. They didn't make no sense to me. Yeah. So last week we saw that if you followed up something that students were expressing incorrectly with some information that triggered them to think about the idea that they might be just picking it incorrectly, yeah. they, could, they could figure out, right. oh, I'm not, you know, oh, yeah, there's a mistake that I'm making. This type of testing seems like the questions are very isolated, that there's not a lot of cross-linking or an opportunity to get them into a situation which if they're actually in maybe a lab or once they're out of the world, yeah. there may be some other information that comes to them that allows them to solve the rest. So sure. is there a way of finding that? Well, here? so this assessment's really designed as a summative assessment. So it's designed not to be integrated into the classroom materials. It's designed to be given at the end. Um, but in the classroom, I would certainly, I personally, and hopefully other people, if they were wanting the students to learn, would be giving them opportunities, asking them a question, seeing their wrong responses, saying, let's see why you're wrong, or let's see what ideas you have that are incorrect, let's talk about it. So in the classroom, we are doing, or I, I don't know who else is doing it, but I'll just say I am doing that in the classroom, right? I mean, that, that's great you know, teaching practice, to give the students an opportunity to be wrong and then try to correct their idea in the classroom with you there to help guide them. But not this. That's not what this assessment is designed for. You could use it that way, but that's not what I was thinking in the design of it. But I was thinking from the perspective that there are some things that, even given the idea that they got something wrong or a hint, they uh -huh. didn't get it. And there's that other opportunity to self-correct without any new information for you, other than just another question sure. that makes the question their answer to mm -hmm. the first question. Yeah. And we do clicker, clicker question series like that in the classroom. That we've definitely seen students correcting their ideas simply by the process of being questioned. Um, and I mean, you could design an assessment that kind of builds one on the other, and you might see you know, evidence of change. We we do have a there are there is a sequence of questions on this on this assessment where there are two questions that are related to each other. Um, there's also one on the genetics concept assessment that has two questions that are related to each other. And when we interview students on that, we do find them sometimes realizing, oops, I made a mistake on that previous question. I just had this epiphany in answering this question. I want to go back and change my answer to the previous question. So there is sometimes learning, even in the test-taking environment, definitely. Mary, did you want to add to that? No, I'm, I'm just going to say it. It sounds to me like it is formative in the sense that you're saying you're going to go back and tell teachers, yes. here are things they still don't get. Right. You need to emphasize. It's, it's not so formative, it's formative in the moment. In that it's sense. just formative yeah. in the long run. Right. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm, I'm basically done. I just, um, let's see. Where are we here? Uh, this is the evolution question, but I think I'll, I'll skip it because I've already told you that they have trouble with this randomness idea. You know, this to get even more depressed. Well, it, it's just the things you've already probably seen before, where they 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 think a mutation has to be bad. Um, you know, they think that somehow you can catch a mutation. I don't know. The more you get a mutation, the more people have it. Still trying to kind of figure out what the person was thinking when they said that. And then the environmental stressors basically trigger evolutionary responses. So just your, the things you guys have all heard, they're still thinking it here as seniors. Um, so um, here's where we're at, um, you know, where I want to go from now on is I want to talk to faculty, I want to think about wording, I want to get ideas on how to change some of the wording that we already have, maybe, um, maybe some um, completely new ideas, because we have some areas where, where we really feel like we, we've got learning goals that we're, we're sure faculty are um, embrace, but we don't know, we don't have good questions for them yet, we don't know exactly how to approach those, quest those, uh, those topics, so I really want, I really have some work to do with the faculty in our department to try to get more input. And then always we need more input from the students. So I'm hoping to use the 
text analysis to maybe ask some open-ended questions to large numbers of students, get more ideas. Um, and I'm, uh, you know, I'm very interested in getting other people's ideas about what should be on this kind of an assessment. So if your biologist out there, Mike, um, you can <laughs> t tell me, you know, what you're thinking, Nancy, of course, also other biologists in the room, um, because I'm, I am, I'm curious of whether we're actually touching on things that are important for these students. Yeah. I'm so I apologize for being late, but it, it, are you thinking of this as a concept in the work? Yeah. And, and as I said, the, uh, what I said at the beginning was that it's hard at this high level to write a really good multiple choice question. You know, a lot of multiple choice questions, we try to write them at high levels, but we're never sure we get them to the top level. And for this kind of an assessment, we really want to be testing deep conceptual knowledge. Can we do it? How much do we really need to rely on more open-ended responses to really capture student thinking? But then those aren't very transportable to other institutions, and you know they're harder to get information out of. So yes, this would be designed as a constant inventory, and maybe it'll be a combination of multiple choice questions and open response questions. But it's more of a higher level. Yes. I mean, there are. I mean, we don't have any cal calculus concept inventories to speak of. You have some biology yes, ones, right? are all but, this, level. but they're all low yep. level. Yeah, okay. And yes. this is going to be this is intended for well, seniors. I mean, there's a question about what's a low level or what's not. I mean, on the BCI, there's a question what makes mutation creative. And right. The number of people who can answer that is not. It's high. just it's just like this question that I yeah just showed you. It's the same idea. You know, that's senior so stuff. That's Nobody not, knows it. <laughs> I mean, I'm worried. You know, I always worry from the private universe view. You get people who can answer all these fancy <laughs> de detailed questions. And then you ask them to make a circuit, or you ask them, you know, right. some, something really some think foundational basic. thing, and they don't know how to do it because right. they they don't think in generality. So working like a biologist wouldn't. I mean, this is all distraction. You know, this is like here's the phenotype. It's in this gene. What could it be? I mean, that would and there you would start knocking them off one mm -hmm. by one, right? You wouldn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. You'd know where to start looking at it, right? Right. So if you and that's what I'm worried about. about yeah, no, it, it's a good, it's a good point that maybe. Well, there's plenty of evidence that multiple choice questions, by their very nature, start tra training people to think that everything comes in a discrete answer. Yes. Right. That there's, you know, it's just like it comes in a chunk. Right. And that's it. Well, the hope is, and again, you know, I, I, I think I admitted up front that I, I wasn't positive that this was going to catch, really capture a high level understanding in the students, but I was going to give it a try. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I mean, the, the hope is that if you're really designing the question based on these wrong ideas that students have given you, that even though they are just picking something from the multiple choice distractors, it is something that they're thinking already. You, you're using this more to identify specific ideas. A general view would be you ask two or three questions that require a level of synthesis, and you ask, can they do that? Yeah. Right. If they can't do it, there's a problem. Now, what exactly the problem is might be a different mm -hmm. issue. But the idea that somebody who's graduating from MCDB does not have an unambiguous understanding of gene, right, gene expression uh -huh. just tells you right away that there's something serious There's something, wrong, there's a problem. Right? So yeah. there's no way to fix this question to make the, the, the take home message better. <laughs> They should be able to answer that question right. without ambiguity. Right. So, but I am, I am, you're right, I am interested in what they are thinking that's wrong. Because I yeah. think it's hard to go and tell somebody, you know what, uh, the students don't have a freaking clue what this is, and you have, clearly haven't done your job, right? You can't do that. So, so you, but you could say, students are really having a hard time with this, I, we think, with this concept. You know, maybe you should spend more time on this, or maybe you should approach from this angle and make them practice this. You know, maybe it's more practical if you have an idea of what they're really, what the hole is in their understanding. I don't know. That's the theory. Yeah. Do you see that a concept inventory like this would have value in terms of diagnosing the abilities of an incoming cohort of graduate students, or would you think that yeah. that that people who wouldn't pass this well would have already been filtered out somehow in your admission process? That, I don't think so. I, I think that's a really good question. Um, I, when I when I asked the faculty, you know, uh, would you look at some of my learning goals here? Would you say if you think these are valuable? And I said, even at the level of like an incoming graduate student to my lab, would you think they should know these things? And of course, um, they they said yes and more, or maybe not that, but this. And so yeah, I think you could use it at the graduate level, um, and you might be shocked, right? You might you you might hope that all those students would already know these things, and they might not. In fact, they probably don't. Um, have an understanding that we hope they have. So yeah, in fact, we use even um, for
for our incoming grad students um, some, some questions from the basic level, the BCI, the GCA, the, the intro level assessments we have in biology and find that stu some students do have some really obvious difficulties with those more basic level questions. Yeah, why not? Why not use it for that level? <laughs> something really interesting, just as I've been filtering through these three responses in the interviews, that we're really noticing is that people are falling into categories um, as far as misconceptions, and so that's why we're really kind of getting more confident about these uh, multiple choices is because we're asking them to stick to a misconception. Like, for example, for the evolution question, people seem to be falling into understanding evolution or they think mutations are always bad, and they'll pick that. Or they think mutations are developed in response to environmental circumstances, and they will always pick that. And those seem to be the kind of three responses we're leaning out of all of these students. Yeah, so even when you're asking for just at an open-ended way, you're getting those three things over and over again. So that does suggest that you can categorize, not that there aren't people who fall outside of that or who have a conglomeration of incorrect, incorrect ideas, but that maybe you can find well, out. I'm wondering whether the fact that nobody's taught about effects of mutations in a generic way mm -hmm. makes it very hard for people. Yeah. To, you know, I mean, I think that's the value of the, the Mueller yeah. technology is that there's only a few ways that the gene can mutate. <coughs> I mean, it's not an infinite number of ways that can change, right? There's right. only a certain set. And that gives people a scaffold to understand it. You're like throwing them in to try to understand. I mean, there are all kinds of mutations that have evolutionary effects. Mm -hmm. There are loss of function mutations, there are gain of function sure, mutations. Sure, sure. I mean, they're all, they have anything you can imagine. Well, see, in a perfect yeah. world, you'd be able to identify, like you just had, Mike, that that's really a critical uh, lactose uh, pr lactose problem. Lactose Sure, sure. Is a, is a, but, like, so if a senior doesn't understand that or can't work with that information, and that should have been taught, you know, back in intro or genetics, then that's where we could use something right. like this to actually say, hey, you know what, we've got a major problem here that should be addressed way back here, so that when they get up here, they remember what was done, you know, they put it all together, maybe they can't put it together because they never got those grounding principles two years ago. So, I mean, that's, you know, in my pie in the sky imagination is exactly what this tool would enable us to do, is look, we got a serious problem with this topic, we need to change this part of our curriculum. Be great if yes. you do that. No, okay. <laughs> Terrific. Okay, I'll be quiet now. Thank you guys. No, we can keep talking. No, no, I'm